Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, March 17th. You're looking at Window Traders' market profile of all the three indices that we follow. And Jay Powell decided to say... All aboard! Bye, bye, bye! Bye. <laughs> Unbelievable. The announcement came out at... 2 p.m., and he had a luck of the Irish as this market just exploded to the upside. Here's the thing I can't figure out. I understand it gets volatile generally in his Q&A, but what he said at 2 o'clock, you know, they left rates unchanged, which was expected. They said they're not going to be looking to raise rates to 2022-23, which is basically out there already. And they were looking at GDP at six and change or six and three quarters or whatever, which people are expecting. So I don't, I, why the market exploded from 10 wide at that point, I don't understand. But expect the unexpected. And that's why I tell you, there is no reason to have a trade. And I had a straddle on actually at that time, which ended up paying me nicely. I got in, got into it too early, still got paid nicely, but it had deteriorated, believe it or not, um, prior to that happening. We'll start with the Russell. The change took place in all three of these indices. The Dow hit an all-time high today, and the S&P hit an all-time high today. The Russell goes out with a trend day. They hold single prints in J. Very important where change took place uh, above A. We actually gapped low, a very small gap in Russell, and they filled it right away. They had a wide pock, 10 wide, before they exploded to the upside. Remember, we had afternoon rally highs in H period in all in all these indices. They all got wiped out. Um, so this is where change took place. This is your price spike. The single prints hold. It's a double distribution day in Russell. It's a double. Uh, it's not a double distribution day in um, triple Qs. They had singles that filled in J. They had singles that filled in K. However. They also go out with that price spike. C's high for them is very important. If you're a buyer, you want to hold A's high, I'm sorry, F's high in the Russell, C's high in the triple Q's as they go out with the price spike. Now, we had a chance for an outside day up. Didn't get it. We go out with a trend day that held, believe it or not. I couldn't believe that there was a large set of single prints in K and they hold them by seven cents in SPY and I think one or two ticks in ES. Value finally, don't look at this value. This value is wrong because I'm in seven tick increments. Value did crawl up finally to overlap and to lower. So they did get it a little, you know, raised. We raised POC as high as it would go. We could have gone up $100 on that spike and POC would have stayed D's high, which ends 10 wide. We were 10 for 10 wide. So I, mean, I actually made money on two side bets. I gave three to one odds that we wouldn't have a perfect POC today. And I think, I don't know what period it was, G. And I also made money saying, I don't think we're going to end up with an outside day up, even though we took out the all-time high. Didn't seem like I had the energy. So I'm happy with that than my money that I made trading. And I had a good day trading. Didn't take a lot of trades. Um, I took a short in A period. Uh, the 396 puts versus the gap. I traded today's expiration. Um, we had the gap that held. Our gap didn't get filled, believe it or not, till J period. So I took it short against that. Then when A period went back up, I thought we had a chance to fill singles. I got long above the open and I bought 394 calls. We didn't fill the gap, but I made money on it. Okay. Then I really didn't do anything. I actually took the straddle. I think it was around D or E period. I don't remember when. And so I was just watching and the market had a very tight range. I did take one long in H. I'm like, well, we're continually going back to POC. So I thought the lows were in at that point, at least until 2 o'clock. So I took a 393 two call, which worked out nicely, a 25 lot back to Pock. And then finally, when two o'clock came, and again, I was not expecting it. I was waiting. I thought maybe 2.30 when the press conference started. It just exploded. 
and I made money on my straddles. And then the only other trade I did, I took an MES short in L period. Uh, I'm like, once we came back into yesterday's uh, all-time high, I'm like, I think we'll fill at least one set. Wrote it down. Again, it was a really small trade, but I wrote it down for a full point. I was very happy on that. Took them off, and then we went back up. M finally stopped the one-time framing up. So, destinations for tomorrow. And before I get to that, keep in mind, there's a lot still coming this week. Powell is speaking again tomorrow at noon or 11.55 a.m. Eastern Time. We have another bond auction, which I'm going to keep track of now going forward. I have the whole sheet when they are. We have another bond auction at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And then Friday, we have quadruple expiration and SPY going next dividend. So it'll be really interesting to see if they could try to pin this thing uh, around the 400 level. Or they might wait to the end of the month to pin the quarterly at 400. We'll see. Remember I said 398 could be a level that they keep stopping at? Guess what? 398.12 is our high today. So pretty interesting. Destinations for tomorrow, one and only one on the upside. Our all-time high of 398.12. Downside, single prints. They started 395.03. K's low. They get filled at B's high, 394.98, the price spike. Then we don't have anything to the 10 wide, 394.31 and then 393.42. Today's low and then 392.03 daily low and you should have the rest below that. So before we get to the charts, here's what I'm looking at for tomorrow. If you're a buyer, and I always give both sides of the equation. First things first, I would expect some consolidation inside today's range. I'd be pretty surprised if we gap higher tomorrow or gap lower tomorrow. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I think odds favor some consolidation inside today's range. If you're a buyer, you need to hold and want to hold the price spike from today. If that price spike gets taken away tomorrow and we close below it, all this was was FOMO buying, making a new high, and then more importantly, we would have to ask ourselves for the short term, is this possibly a look above and fail, the all-time high? Somebody asked me that in the room. Is this a look above and fail? I'm like, we have to give the buyers their due. I don't care that we closed below yesterday's high. But at some point, you want to see a new high again. Otherwise, you can say this could possibly be, be in a look above and fail. So B's high is critical for me tomorrow. You want to hold that, or this could be a look above and fail, at least for the short term. On the flip side, if you're a seller, you want to see, the, uh, you want to see today's high hold. Because then you can say, oh, well, you know, hey, that could be a look above and, uh, and fail and we're going down. We take out today's high and start getting any legs and we never test B's high from today. Well, guess what? 400's in the cards maybe sooner than I think. And then on the charts. Just going to show you SPY. I'll recap everything at the end of the week. Monthly is chugging along. One time frame it up five months. Weekly, again, I was calling it balance, but the way we've now gone above the previous balance and everything, up. So monthly's up, weekly's up, one time framing up two weeks right now. And then the daily is balance for me. Because we took out today's low, it's balance. It could have... Even if we closed above yesterday's high, I would have said balance outside day up. So if the bulls are really sh serious about what they did today, well, then we should take out today's high and have all three time frames up going into Friday. That's what I'd be looking for. So right now, the daily is balance. We had an awesome day in the trading room. First things first, I tell people all the time, it's the money you keep, not the money you make. So don't do anything stupid right before the announcement. God help people that were short, that didn't have a stop in when two o'clock rolled around. We educate people what the market's doing, who's doing it and why. It's not just saying I'm long, I'm short. 
Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Have a great night, and we'll speak prior to the opening.